Well, hello and welcome to another edition of the Early Days Podcast. Matt Early here with you. Took me a little while to get this one out because it's been a bit of a rough week. I've been sick with, I don't know, I think it was gastro or something all week, so yeah, I haven't really done a whole lot and definitely didn't feel like uh, sitting down and trying to come up with valid points for anything, so you know, it took me a little while to get this sorted, but we're finally here, so we're back. Have you enjoyed the last couple of episodes, and I hope you've found the Early Days podcast Facebook page, maybe, and given it a like, so you can tell me how awesome I am at doing this, and my Patreon, the Early Days I think it's, uh, yeah, the early days, uh, Patreon page, and you can go there for a couple of bucks and a month, and support what I'm doing if you like what I'm doing. But anyway, let's get on to today's, well, this week's topic, and this week I'm going to talk about disability and being seen as a man or disability and masculinity for the most part I never really let anything stop me even though physically there are a lot of things that I probably couldn't do or shouldn't be able to do being in the chair but I've never really let anything stop me from having a pretty full life but for as long as I can remember I've always had self-esteem issues and body image issues and issues when it relating to, I guess, seeing myself as, like, as a man and as what a man should be in society's, well, maybe not society's view anymore these days, but society's old view and which is unfortunately that view that I can't really get out of my head, so it's kind of it's kind of stuck in there and kind of messes with your head sometimes when you think too much about it. There's always that old view that men are seen as the protectors, the doers, they're the ones who do all the handyman stuff, the physical labour and whatnot, and kind of do yeah the the manly things like you know, being able to fix things and. You know, being able to get on roofs and fix gutters and you know, fix things around the house and you know, be able to be the provider and the protector and those sort of things, the the man of the house. And, yeah, that's something that, I don't know, when I think about myself, I kind of struggle with that, with myself and that image that society has kind of put in my head from many, many years ago and how I stack up to the so-called normal man. For starters, I'm like, I don't know, four foot maybe, something like that. So I'm tiny anyway and particularly don't, really feel like I look like an adult man as such so that right there I'm kind of already behind behind on that one so where do I go from there pretty much from the moment I could I grew a beard and tried to make myself look more manly and started going to the gym so I could build myself up so I wasn't this scrawny little thing that could be mistaken for a child and yeah, just tried to man, make myself physically look more manly than childlike to help things a bit. But even then I've still struggled with the image of what a man should be able to be and what a man should be able to do and what I can and can't do and how that 
maybe it plays into the mind of potential partners uh, in the future at some point and what they think of my abilities and whether me not being able to do stuff impacts what could happen relationship-wise in the future. I don't know. It's, it's probably an irrational thought, and I probably know it is an irrational thought, but it's one of those things that, I don't know, I guess you have it stuck in your head and so you can't, it's kind of hard to get it out of your head no matter how many times you know that it's an irrational thought and, yeah. Here's an analogy. If you had two toys on a shelf, one that was perfectly fine, a new looking toy that didn't have anything wrong with it, or a broken toy, which one would you pick? Would you wouldn't pick the broken toy, would you? And yeah, so that's I guess the way that I kind of in a messed up way see myself compared to normal, regular able bodied men is somewhat damaged, broken compared to um compared to those men out there. And so then you think, yeah, why what can I offer that these people don't already offer? So it's kind of, yeah, it's, it's a vicious cycle that goes around your head thinking that you'll never be like them. So you'll never be good enough, which is kind of stupid, but yeah, it's the way that my messed up mind thinks and because of that I definitely would say that I have a tendency to have a jealous streak because to me I kind of think that if the person the woman I'm with gets a chance to be with someone quote unquote normal then why wouldn't they run and take that chance instead of being with someone that's damaged and not manly enough to be able to do or not able enough to be able to do the manly things like help around the house doing like handyman crap and being able to protect them if something happens when we're out and about and someone tries to be a complete dick and I can't do anything about it because I'm four foot tall what am I going to do punch him in the nuts Mm, yeah that'll get on real well that'll just turn around and tip me out of my chair and then we're screwed so done yeah so that's really not going to work I know that self esteem issues and not feeling good enough is definitely not a disability specific issue but yeah I've definitely felt like it's been compounded ten times more because of the fact that I'm in the chair and I'm not as able bodied as the regular guy and therefore somewhat damaged goods compared to a perfectly functioning person on two legs that can do all the things that I can't do so it it definitely plays on that masculinity issue makes you feel like even though yeah you do things to make yourself look like a man you still feel like a a boy trapped or a man trapped in a boy's body in a way because of the fact that this small little body can't do the things that an able-bodied body can do. If I could snap my fingers one day and not be in the chair, would I do it? Definitely not. I think being in the chair 
has made me who I am today and I wouldn't change that. But there is things about being the chair that I wish I could change and you know, the not being able to do all the regular things that guys can do for people is yeah, that's the big thing I kind of want to change is yeah, I want to be able to get on a roof I probably could get on a roof but wouldn't exactly be the most safe idea but I probably could do it but yeah things like that just like getting doing manual like labour jobs even like it's as stupid as it sounds I know but yeah, just being able to do jobs that's something that people I guess take for granted and yeah, people like myself I guess wish in a way that we could do it even if it's only for a little bit but yeah, you just want to be able to do what other guys can do and be as helpful as other guys try to be although I guess a lot of women would probably debate that whole subject of how helpful men really are so yeah maybe maybe I'm not as different as I thought but you still kind of feel like you're not being able to you can't do what everyone else can do even if they don't always do it I know women say that it's not all about what an able-bodied guy is able to do and all that and that apparently doesn't really matter but even then I still get that feeling that you know, compared to an able-bodied man I'm definitely not as masculine and able to do enough to be a quote unquote real man When I was growing up, I always wanted to be like the other guys in in school. Like they all seem to have a have their shit together and have it going on. And I was just in the background, kind of existing, not really living, and kind of just watching it all happen. Because yeah, I didn't feel like I was up to there standard so I just kind of sat back and chilled pretty much for my high school and and my high school experience sort of once I left school and sort of saw the world a little bit for a while there I kind of thought oh yeah okay maybe there is a chance where this could work out and all my messed up irrational thoughts are stupid And then, yeah, I did think that for a while, but then it kind of creeped back in and sort of lingers there now. And no matter how many times I'd say to myself that I'm doing pretty good for all the things that have happened in my 34 years, it's just things that like that that, linger that make you go hmm yeah things aren't bad but things aren't normal and I'm not normal and I want to be able to do things that other guys can do and I don't want to be that broken one I want to be just as normal as some guy on two legs whatever normal is. Although then, on the other hand, do I want to be normal? Maybe not, because being me and not being normal has made me who I am. And so, and it's got me a few good things over the years, so I wouldn't change that. It's definitely made my life quite interesting over the years. I definitely wish I could take away that man that